What's up guys, it's Cody with 3 Print and Technology, so for today's video I'm going to be replacing the stock extruder drive system on the Tebo Tornado 3 printer. As most of you know if you've been following our Instagram page that we've been having problems out of the Tebo Tornado 3 printer. Something of under extrusion and so that's result resulted in us swapping the nozzles out, taking the PTFE tubing, taking the hot end apart, changing filament, all kinds of stuff. But we recently found the plastic tab on the extruder system doesn't really stay in place that good, so we decided to go with a all metal extruder option that we found on Amazon. We figured that we try out the cheapest option first being these $10 to $30 all metro options on Amazon eBay and then if it doesn't work getting an E3D Titan extruder and then maybe getting a Bontech extruder or the really main three options for this type of extruder replacement. But anyways, if you're not having this problem with your, uh, with your stock extruder and just want to replace it for all metal one to get better filament flow or your plastic extruder broke and replacing it anyways, you can still watch this video because it will still apply. It's more of a how-to video. Also at the end, I'll show you a test print with the new extruder setup. Okay, so here we have the kit just came in. It's Winson, I think I said I pronounced the brand name, high quality factory outlet. Ender 3 CR10 Pro Dual Gear Extruder made in China. So I read on the Amazon website where I got it from that it is compatible with the Tabor Tornado. Tornado and they've essentially used all the same exterior motors Ender 3, CR10, Tevo so it should fit the only thing you would have to do would be to tune the step or e-steps down I think to like 80 or 92 so we got the factory sticker seal on the plastic box it's pretty good packaging in my opinion nice solid box and then you can see some of the metal parts the gear and the spring this looks like a bit a bed spring so that should be interesting to see how it fits here's an example of the bed spring on the turbo tornado so it looks like exactly the same part but now we're going to cut the seal and open the box and see what's all inside of it Okay, so opening the box, got one bag. We have one bag, so take that out. And we got the, it's like three pieces of machine metal, the extruder gear, spring, and some hardware to connect it to the motor. So we'll get the old plastic extruder gear pieces off and then rail these pieces out of the print bed okay so here is one of the main issues I have with the stock extruder is that I have it all the way loosened I guess where it's supposed to have the add roar push all the up against it where it doesn't move instead of having it tightened up where it's tighten back so you can get bigger filament into it but when it's all the way loosened where it's supposed to not be able to move against the gear right here and filament you can do this right here and I believe that's what's causing the filament to strip when it's being pushed through the extruder assembly causing the under extrusion problem because I can hold this piece right here tab right here with my fingers and when it's printing 
it'll fix the problem, but I can't do that all the time. So right now what I'm going to do is take the stock extruder off and then start to replace it for the new metal extruder. So after taking the parts out of the bag and the plastic box it came in, we have these two metal pieces, those are the two main pieces. Obviously this being the base for the new extruder drive system. And this being the hand handle with the gear on it. And you also have a small plastic bag. Has the print bed spring like I mentioned. And then the PTFE connector gear. So like the screw to go into the handle. And a few other small screws and parts. Okay, so I took the screws off the top of the stock one that go in the hose right here. And I unscrewed this one too, but I'm going to in place because I think it is holding this piece on. But I also have the extruder motor on, so you'll make sure you put it in the same orientation you took it off of. But yeah, that's what the piece is. So we will take this PTF2. PTFE tube and off the PTFE tube and that should get rid of the stock extruder. Alright, so we're starting the assembly process. So there's not much instructions with this. It's mounting four or five pictures off of Amazon's website. So kind of gonna have to wing it I guess. Or just follow the pictures. But starting off, we got the main plate. This is going to hold the motor and all the exterior, exterior parts to everything. So you want the PTFE tubing connector to go on the right hand side. And there's about five screws, five or six screws in the bag. You want to get the four that match up and screw them into the plate and the motor. Okay, so I spent some time working with this screw and I realized that one is slightly bigger than these screws right here. So I'm going to start with these two smaller screws up on the right hand side. Then I think this goes on the top right one so it doesn't hit the extruder idler arm because it's a flat top. And I think that last one goes on the bottom right. Okay, so now we got the extruder base plate I guess mounted. It's pretty solid fit. And there's that flat screw screw. So now we'll get the gear and the extruder adder arm mounted. Okay, so the adder arm and the motor both have gears and they both mesh up. But we got to install this gear onto the motor shaft. And to do that, we got to remove the stock gear, but we can't do that because of this filament feeder piece. So we have to take this all back apart, and it's a matter of remove this piece. Okay, so there's no screw on this one, so I'm doing it just prying up with the screwdriver until I can get loose enough to pull off. Then I can put the new piece on. Alright, so there's the old piece, and there's the new piece, so probably gonna be a big upgrade. So this one has a screw to it in place better, and it's metal, not plastic. So, yeah, we'll get this new piece installed and then remount it again. On these, make sure you get the screw on the flat part of the shaft, and then read it like this. Then, once we get all connected, or adjust the hat of the gear so it matches up with the handle right here. On the gear shaft piece, I adjusted this one until it matched the whole hat. So going through here matches that. I can always adjust it if I need to. And then on this handle piece, I mounted the red metal tube inside here to screw the in place. And then I used one of the old screws that came off of the stock exterior right here. 
and I took the new one out and just put it into place and it seems to fit like that. So this is what I have right now. So I think the only step I got to do is mount the spring. So this is going to rest against the handle, you get the spring, you get the brass piece right here that's going to hold the screw into place. And then we'll mount this too. So on this one you want the spring, spring going inside it with the brass, brass two piece going on the inside and the screw goes on the outside. Okay so here is the finished assembly. Obviously you're probably going to need to adjust the adder gears once we do a test run. Also I could not get this piece off. So let's push it up and put a new piece on. I have no idea how to get this piece off because I think it's broke. There's that blue piece, not sure why. It's either here, but we'll leave that here. So the only thing we got to do is do a test print and make sure this piece is calibrated. I'm not sure how I feel about this screw is spring it because it's no movement at all. Okay, so after trying to move it on the first attempt, I think the gears are binding. So I'm gonna take the reason to spring up and see what's going on. I have this replacement spring that I can use if I need to. It's not as big as it, I don't think. Okay, so here's the problem. The gear had slipped because I didn't get the grub screw tight enough. So I'm going to fix that, then I'm going to try again. So there's still two issues I'm facing on doing this. One is it gets dimmed like that until I hold it. And two is it's somehow reversed. So i got to figure out what's going on with these two issues. Okay, so I found a spring that works, I think. But I did notice that once it does a four spin on the gear, there is a jump time one on it. So I'm not sure if it's going to cause a lot of problems or not. But I think it would be a better option than what I had on the exterior motor than the plastic one. I think it would be a better option than the stock plastic exterior still. Let's have to see how it prints. So now I'm going to try to figure out how to reverse the stepper motor direction. Okay, so now that I've reversed the direction of the extruder motor and chopped the spring out, because this is what was causing it, the gear that was on the stepper motor drive on the stock one was turning this big gear, which was an extra gear. But the motor had to turn so it changed the directions. So I had to reverse the direction by using the Tevo Tornado Marlin firmware and changing the value and it's really uploading it. But now I think I'm ready for a test print so we get everything set up. Okay, so here's the part of it making it looking pretty good. Anything, I think it may be over extruding a little bit. And as for the motor, it's making a tiny noise, but I don't think it's something to worry about. Let's have to see how it goes. Alright, so here's the progress so far. It's definitely better than the plastic stock steel, but as you can see, it's Need some calibrating. Okay, so here's the final, the finished print. I actually think it might be a bit over extruding going on, but this piece is nice and solid. Unlike the the pieces that used to be like this on it, this plastic extruder, where it's delaminating easily. But yeah, here's what it looks like up close. It's obviously what we need really calibrate brightening and the other on the Z axis layer. But yeah, that's what it looks like. 
But overall, I think it's a good upgrade for this printer. Maybe it's not the best version of the Metro Extruder. I think the gear has some issues making a complete rotation. And the spring that they sent with it didn't really fit that well. But overall, it's better than the stock plastic extruder. It doesn't strip as easy. And the deal gear system is a better option for this anyways and the metro so it's not going to bend as easy or get loose over time but I think this is finally going to fix the delamination issue under extrusion that I was having of my printer can't say for sure how it's going to do but I will just have to see over time how it does so right now this is the first and only upgrade that I've done to this printer. Okay, so I tried doing the exterior calibration and that is very major 100 millimeters of filament. See how far it goes through the extruder and then the major actually goes through and you need to get that as close as possible for the extrusion or a step to be accurate and so I did the 100 millimeters and it pulled 285 millimeters or about that much through so that's going to be adjusted and I also found that the rotation issue when it spins around more time it was like a bump from it that is the grub screw on the motor shaft hitting the handle or something like that so I'm going to see if I can fix that as well okay so that's going to wrap up this video for this week if you like this video and want to see your latest videos first make sure to click subscribe and if you have any video ideas you want us to do leave a comment down below and I'll see you guys next time